Welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. Last week we learned how God created the world. He created it perfect. He created it very good. But when we look around us, we see sin and death has entered into his creation. How did that happen? We're going to find out today. I'm so glad you're here. Eddie has a question too. Yes, I have a question. I'm just wondering, why did they eat from that fruit? You know, they sure ruined it for all of us. I just can't imagine. You know, I think I would have done better, but there's times I don't do the right thing. Oh my, well, I just heard it. Listen to their story, and I want to learn how I can do better than they did. Oh, all right, that's my question. All right, talk to you later. Glad I'm here. Okay, bye everybody. Love ya. Bye. Mm, bye. Now remember that when we believe God, we can understand what even the scientists don't understand today. We understand how God created the world. And the Bible tells us that he spoke it into existence. On day one, he created light, and he separated the light from the darkness, the light he called day, and the darkness he called night. Yes. And then on day two, the Bible tells us that he separated the waters from the waters. Remember how important water is for life? God made it in abundance. Well, on day three, though, in order to have life, you have to have food. And so he heaped up the waters in one place, and the dry land appeared, and then he said, let there be plants. And there were plants and grass and herbs. And of course, remember, they all had that little factory in them. That was a seed. Oh, it was marvelous. Then on the fourth day, he said, let there be a body that shines in the sky that rules the day. That was the sun. And a light that rules the night. That was the moon and then the stars. That was day four. And day five, the Bible says that God just spoke. And he spoke that all the fishes, the, the sea was teeming with life. And then there were birds up above. And oh, it was wonderful. But remember, there was dry ground at this time, so they could land in the trees. And then on the sixth day, God created the animals. But on the sixth day, God also created something else that was very, very important. And before God created this most important creation, in fact, it was why he created everything, he had a little conference. And the Bible says the conference was between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that they said, let us, let us make now a creation that's different than all the others. They said, let us make a man and let's make this man in our image and so in our likeness and so the Bible says that that is exactly what they did now you know what remember they had created plants now plants have a body and that body just means they have a physical appearance and so you know but plants can't move around they're stationary then God created the little worms and the bugs and the insects and and the flies and and all the animals and you know what they have bodies too but they don't have a mind that reasons and a mind that thinks in fact they just respond to stimuli or they respond to instinct God sometimes you'll tell the butterflies fly halfway around the world and there they mate and they come back and lay their eggs and the little butterflies flies and, 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 and it's just within their hearts we don't even know how it happens. There's no reason for so many things that happen other than there was a God that put it into their hearts. So he created things with a body and then though the Bible says that he created all the animals. Now you know I want to say we're not sure about the animals. There's varying degrees of animals. Some of them kind of express emotion. You know a dog can be very happy when they see you or they can be sad and they have somewhat of a soul. A soul is that which makes you conscious with yourself. But when God made man, he was so much greater than all the animals. Well, he said, let us make man in our 
image. And in doing that, God, then the Bible says, breathed within him the breath of life, and he became a living being. God breathed within him, and he had a spirit. And you know, God is spirit. And so it's with that spirit that man can have communion with God. We can know our creator. We can worship him. Do you know any animals that pray? Do you know any animals that have ever built a church? They don't. And for people to say that animals and man are the same, has an animal ever written a book, made an invention? H have they ever built a city? There is an infinite difference between the intelligence and the reasoning. Animals don't talk about the future and plan for the future and remember what happened in the past. They don't have the capacity that man has. And the Bible tells us that man was made in the image of God. And so God made man. And he made man to live with him and even rule with him in heaven someday. But something happened to the beautiful, wonderful creation that man made. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But first, I have a wonderful verse for you to learn. There was a little girl that lived a number of years ago and her mother had become scarred on her face. And in those days, they didn't have the plastic surgery that they had today. And many times, people like that, they would live in a special institution. And she was also very sick because of it, and she had to be taken care of by a nurse. So this little girl was raised by her aunt, and she never met her mother. They thought it would be better for her not to see her mother's face. But when she was nine years old, they thought it's time for her to go in and meet her mother. And so they took her in to meet her mother. And when they, she went in, her mother's face was all scarred and looked awful. And the little girl went in and saw her mother. And, and she just went out screaming and crying and saying, that's not my mother, that's not my mother. Well, her aunt decided it was time for that little girl to know the truth. And so she told her, she says, you know, the reason that your mother is like that is because when you were a little baby, there was a fire in your house. Your mother got out safe. She was fine, but she realized you weren't safe. So she went back into that fire just for you. And that's when her face became so burned and disfigured. Well, when the little girl heard that, her heart was broken, and she went back into her mother's room. But this time, she just covered her mother's face with kisses and said, I love you, I love you. Thank you for what you did for me. Do you know there's someone that did that for you, only did something even much worse? The Bible tells us that this was the perfect Son of God. And he for you, because he was absolutely perfect. He had never sinned, never done one thing wrong. He died as a common criminal. Why would the perfect son of God die as a criminal? Well, the Bible tells us that it was because wicked men hated him and they accused him falsely. They couldn't even find one thing to accuse him of. He was perfect. But yet he said, I'm going to die for you. Now, you know, kids, he was accused unjustly. If I were to take you and put you up in front of all your friends and accuse you unjustly and treat you like the worst person in the whole class, would you feel bad? Maybe you wouldn't like me anymore. Maybe you wouldn't even come back to school anymore. Well, you know what? That's what Jesus did. But he died there as a common criminal for sin, but not for his own sin. The Bible tells us he died for the sin of someone else. Who was it that had sinned? Who was it that had done wrong? Ah, the Bible says it's you and it's me. You know, we've done different sins. Some of us aren't as bad as others. But the Bible says that all have sinned and we all fall short of the kingdom of God. And so the Bible also tells us that without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. In other words, when you sin, it's like a capital offense. You need to pay for your life. And you may say, well, I don't think my sins are that bad. But do you know if you break the law of the land, you don't go before the judge and say, oh, yes, I did that. And yes, okay, I think I owe, let's see, about $300 and um, maybe 45 days in jail. 
the judge says, oh, no, no. You broke the law. I, the state, determines what your punishment is. And that's what God, God says that if you knew what sin really is, how it destroys you, how it destroys my earth, he says the punishment for sin is death. And without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. And so Jesus says, I will shed my blood. But he was perfect. He had not sinned. He died on that cross for our sin. But you know what? The Bible says that God, while he was on that cross, poured upon him. This is something that they could not see. But while they saw him die on the cross. But while he was on the cross, God put upon him the sin of the entire world. Put upon him the punishment for your sin and my sin went upon the Lord Jesus Christ and he willingly took it. And so it says he took the punishment for something he had not done so we can have the reward of something we have not done. It says God made him to be sin for us because we had sinned that we might become the righteousness. We are not righteous. We don't do the right things. We haven't done things that, that allow us to get into heaven. He says that we might become the righteousness of God because of him so we can live in heaven and our verse today says for he made him to who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him and that's found in 2 Corinthians 5 21 I'm just going to look it up right here and you know maybe you can look at these and say it with me can you say it with me here it goes for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. God provided a way for us to be right because Jesus willingly took our sin. He who did not sin paid the price and gave to those who were not righteous so that we can live with God forever and not be punished for our sin. I want you to say that verse right now, and the motions go, for he, that's God, for he made him, that's Jesus, to be sin, point the thumbs down, for us, point the thumbs at yourself, for he knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Do you think you could do those motions? Let's see if you can do the motions and sing it. Let's try that one more time. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Second Corinthians 5.21 You did an excellent job. Do it again, please. So God made man, his highest creation, his most important creation. It was why he made the entire universe, because he wanted to share his love, and he made man. He loves you. You are his highest creation, his most important creation. And so when God made man, he says, I'm going to put him in a beautiful, beautiful place to live. Now, you know, there's these beautiful homes that you see today, and they're gorgeous. But God says, oh, no, I know where I'm going to put him. And so he made a garden, and he made this beautiful garden for Adam to live in. You know, one time, 
we went to Lake Powell and we were on a houseboat and we could have stayed in these rooms, but no, we all took our sleeping bags and we went upstairs. We, we wanted to be under the night sky and we wanted to see the moon dance on the waters and we wanted to be able to see the sunrise in the morning. Oh, there's nothing more beautiful than creation. And God put him in this garden and he gave to him all the fruit of the garden to eat. But God says that in that garden, he put many trees, but he said there's two trees that are named. One was the tree of life. And when he ate from that, maybe it had healing powers. I don't know. But he would eat from that tree and live forever. But also in the garden, he put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, you know, Adam knew good. He knew God. It was a perfect environment. But God says, I don't want you to have the knowledge of evil. So don't even eat from it. Now, kids, God says to you, I don't want you to know evil. There's things that people do that aren't right. Don't even find out or talk about what they do. He doesn't want you to even think or talk about such things. And you know, the Bible says that God says, in the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. Now, kids, the garden was filled with trees that were good to eat. And so there would never be a time when they needed to eat this. I just went on a cruise. There was all this food at the buffet. If there would have been a dish over here they said, don't eat of, I would have said, I'm not going to eat of it. There's so much other. I will never even want to look at that or eat it. Well, you know, the Bible tells us that God in the garden gave Adam a job. Do you know that it's really fun to help someone who's, who's wonderful? Maybe you love helping your teacher. And so he said to Adam, Adam, I have a job for you. And his job was to name all the animals. Now, do you know, they will tell you that the first man was just kind of like an ape. No. The first man was brilliant. He was probably the smartest man that ever lived. He named all the animals. Do you know that my brother has a master's degree in civil engineering? And he had little calves, baby cows, when he was growing up. And he named them Brownie and Blackie. My dad, his last dog that he had, he named the dog Dog. He says, oh, well, it's spelled D-A-W-G. But that's what he named him. And here Adam went in and named all the animals. And as you know, as he was naming the animals, and you can help me say them, it's Mr. Zebra. And then every time he'd find a Mr., he'd find a Mrs. And then there was Mr. Giraffe. And then, well, yes, there was a Mrs. Giraffe. And then there was a, a gorilla. Oh, yes, and then there was a Mrs. Gorilla. And then there was a tiger. And then there was a Mrs. Tiger. And then there was a, a hippopotamus. And then there was a Mrs. Hippopotamus. But do you know that as Adam named all of these animals, the Bible tells us, but for Adam, there was not found a helper that was like him. He was evidently looking, and he didn't find any with him. Well, there, there's always a Mrs. Drew and Mrs. of all of these, and, and maybe there's going to be a Mrs., but, but he never found one. And you know what, kids? God had a plan. And if you believe in evolution, how was there ever a male and a female so that they could have babies if you believe in evolution? It doesn't even make sense. There is absolutely no way. But God had a way. He, and the Bible says that in the beginning, he created them male and female so they could have the little babies and repopulate the earth. Well, but in all of these animals, no, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So God, the Bible tells us that he took Adam and he caused him to fall into a deep sleep. And as Adam, now God could have done it anyway, but this is what he chose. As Adam fell into that sleep, God went in and took one of his ribs and then closed up the flesh. Now, does that mean that men have one less rib than women? Well, no, it doesn't, because if you take out a rib but leave the, the outer membrane, the rib will grow back. But even if it didn't grow back, 
It's not whether you have a leg or not that determines if your child has a leg. That's all in the DNA. Adam still had the same DNA. And so the Bible says that from that rib that he took, he fashioned and made a woman. He wanted Adam to know this woman is the same as you. She's equal with you. She was taken out of your rib. And then the Bible tells us that God brought that woman to Adam. And so when Adam woke up, oh, there she was. And she was beautiful. And she was like him. Do you know that there are more songs and poems written about love than anything else. And right here is the very first love song that was ever written. And Adam, he must have burst into song. And he says, oh, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That's me. Oh, and he loved her very much. But God did something else. The Bible says that God then, that he took Eve and he brought her to Adam to be Adam's wife. And, you know, that was God's plan for marriage. One man marries one woman. He gives it right here. And, you know, in the garden, they loved each other. It was all wonderful. It was perfect. And every day, in the cool of the evening, God would come down and walk and talk with them. And so you would think everything was just perfect. Well, there was one thing. And that is at the same time God made the earth, he made the heavens. And we don't know what day it was, but he made the host of heavens. And there was a cherubim, the highest order of angels, that was the most beautiful of all the angels, that would lead the other angels in worship. Now all the angels saw God create the world, and they couldn't create one thing. But this angel, his name was Lucifer, he was very beautiful. And there's something about beauty that people can become very prideful. And so he thought, I should reign in heaven and not God, because I am so beautiful. We don't know why, but a third of the angels followed him. You know, kids, there is something about beauty. You've got to be careful. Just because someone's cute doesn't mean that what they're saying is right. And when they did that, God cast them down to this earth. Well, when God made Adam, he gave Adam dominion. He was to rule over the earth. Now, God ruled over Adam, but Adam was to rule over the earth. Well, Satan had wanted to rule over heaven. And so when he was cast down, he now wanted to rule over earth, but that had been given to man. And so the Bible says that he had a plan to make Adam and Eve eat of that fruit. So how was Satan, who had been Lucifer, ever going to make Adam and Eve eat from that tree? They would never be hungry. That there was never a reason that they would ever have to do that. Well, you know what? He had a plan. And what he did with Adam and Eve worked very well. And it's the same thing that he does with us. First of all, he separated them. He waited until Eve was alone. And then the Bible tells us that, of course, you know, beauty listens. So the Bible says that he took upon himself the form of a snake, a serpent. If we saw a serpent, we'd be scared to death. But the Bible says that at that point, that serpent was probably the most beautiful. It was crafty. It was cunning. We're not sure exactly how it looked. But, you know, then the Bible says that that serpent began to talk to Eve. And when the serpent began to talk to Eve, she didn't even think a thing about it. And so he said to her, he said to the woman, uh, has uh, God said, uh, now, now let me get this straight here. Did God tell you that you should not eat of every tree of the garden? You know, certainly God let you eat of any tree that you want. I mean, you know, he's a good God. He, he would want you to have everything. Now, now, please, he did tell you he could eat of every tree, didn't he? Well, the woman said to the serpent, well, we, we, we may eat of all of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, because if you do, perhaps you will die. Now, God didn't say perhaps you will die. God says you will die. 
And you know, also he said you could touch it. Now there's no use playing around with sin because when you learn God's word, know exactly what he says. He says, don't turn to the right. Don't make him stricter. Don't turn to the left. Don't make him easier. Just do exactly what God has said. But you know, when she quoted the word of God, the serpent says, oh, oh, no, 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 that's not right. You're not going to die. Take it from me. No. You know, let me tell you a secret here. You know, it says, for God, he knows that the day that you eat of this tree, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And, you know, he doesn't want that. No, but that's really what's going to happen. Now, you know, kids, I don't know what the serpent looked like. But somehow when she spoke to us, she didn't think it was strange. And she put what the serpent said on equal footing with what God had told her. Do you know that I know some of you, you'll go to church, you'll learn things, your parents will tell you things, you'll know things from the Bible. Then you can have somebody out here you hardly know and they'll say, oh, no, no, that's not right. Oh, you don't have to do that. And you believe them over everything that you have learned. It's just amazing. Well, the Bible, and, and I want to say this about the serpent. We don't know what the serpent was doing. You know, I have a fruit here. Now, we don't know what the fruit was that was in the garden. And I'm sure it probably was not a fruit that we even know today. Now, all the other fruit trees, we know what they were because it was after their kind. You know, the seeds. So the same trees that were back then, they have today. We know one tree that was there was a fig tree. But maybe the serpent was eating it. Maybe the serpent had taken a bite. Mm. Mm. That's delicious because Eve saw that the tree was good for food. How would she see it was good for food? Maybe the serpent was eating it and see, see, oh, I feel so much better. We don't know exactly what it says. And then she says, oh, it's pleasant to the eyes. You know, that's a beautiful color, and it's, oh, it's beautiful inside, too. And she says, it's desirable to make you wise. I don't know how you can look at a piece of fruit and say, well, that's going to make me wise. But that's what she thought. And so what do you think she did? Well, kids, when someone asks you to do something, and you know God has said you shouldn't do it, or your parents have said you shouldn't do it, then you need to do something. You need to do what Eve should have done. You need to say just, hey, wait a minute. Can I get back to you on that? Do you know that in the cool of the evening, which wasn't very far away, God, as he did every day, was going to come down and walk and talk with Adam and Eve. They could have asked him, now, God, what did you mean by that? Are you sure? No. And, and they could have asked him any question that they wanted. But you know what? There are some times that you don't want to wait and ask anybody. Somebody else is doing that, and you just think, oh, I want to do that too. And so you just try and get in under the line. She did not wait and ask God. She did not wait and ask her husband. Now, now honey, what, what, what did God really say? I wasn't here when he said it, but you were. She didn't do that. The Bible says she took the fruit. And she just took a big bite out of it, too. <gasps> she ate it, too. <gasps> but you know what? Nothing really happened. But she did do what many of us do when we have done wrong. She immediately went and found her very best friend, her husband, and she said to them, him. She said, oh, you know what? I, I, I ate this. And, and, and she, she said, here, you should eat it too. And it was delicious. I'm sure she said it was delicious. And I'm sure she might have said, and see, nothing happened to me. Well, when Adam got the fruit, the Bible tells us that it was different for him. Eve was deceived. She thought that she would become wise. She believed what the serpent said. But when she gave that fruit to her husband, Adam, oh, thank you for this fruit. But you know what? The Bible tells us that Adam knew this is wrong. God told me we were not to eat of the tree. If I eat of this fruit, I will be disobeying God. He had a choice. And it's a choice that you will have someday. And that is, are you going to do what God says? Or are you going to do what someone that says, oh, I love you. Oh, you know what? I love you so much. Who are you going to choose to obey? 
Well, the Bible tells us that he knew what it was to be without Eve. Maybe you've been without a friend, and you finally get a friend, and then you feel like, oh, they're everything I have in the world. But if they ask you to do something that is against God, they don't really love you. Love is helping you to do the right thing. Love is wanting the right thing for the other person. Many times they don't love you. They just want what they feel like. Well, the Bible tells us that Adam made a choice, and he made a choice with his eyes wide open, knowing that what he was going to do was wrong. And so, you know what he chose? He chose to <gasps> take a bite of that fruit, too. Well, the Bible says after he took the bite, then both of their eyes were opened. Now, Satan had told Eve, yes, your eyes will be opened. But you know what? It wasn't like they thought. They now could see that they had done something wrong. And the Bible tells us that they were ashamed. You know, they had lived in perfect harmony and everything was wonderful. Now they felt these feelings that were ashamed. And so they went and they found these fig leaves and they sewed them together. And they made themselves covering. And then it was just that time of the evening when they heard a sound. It was the Lord. The Lord was coming down to walk and talk with them. You know, because wouldn't it be just wonderful one evening for the Lord to come down and you could talk to him? But you know what they did? It says when they heard him, they hid. Uh, instead of running up to the Lord, whom they loved and made and created him, they hid among the trees of the garden. And it says, then the Lord called to Adam and says, where are you? Did God know where he was? Yes, he did. And Adam says, well, I heard your voice, and I was afraid, so I hid myself. And God said to him, Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Now, did God know what they had done? Yes. But God asked them, because God wanted them to confess. You know, kids, it's so much better to confess, because when you confess, you say, I did it. I shouldn't have done it. And he, wanted, he wants us to confess. And here they came out of hiding. Now they were talking to him. And so they said, yes, Adam says, I ate. But you know what Adam did? Adam did what a lot of people do. Instead of saying, I did that, and I shouldn't have, and I knew it, and I did it anyway, he passes the blame to Eve. They had had a loving relationship. Now he blames her. You, you're the one. You're the one that caused me to do that. It was her. You gave her to me, and she did that. And so the Lord said to the woman, what is it you have done? And so what is the woman? Who does she blame? She blames the serpent. Oh, it was the serpent. The serpent made me do it. No, the serpent didn't make her do it. And so he turns to the serpent, but he doesn't say anything to the serpent. He just curses the serpent. Now he curses the actual animal. This animal evidently walked upright. He says, no, from now on you're going to eat the dust and crawl on your belly all the days of your life. And then he, there was a punishment to Eve. And the punishment to Eve, he says, you know, you're going to have little babies, and you're going to bring forth those babies in sorrow and sadness. And, and it's, going to, you're, it's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. But you know what? When your mommies had you, there, there was pain. But then what did she have after the pain? Oh, she had this little baby that she loved. And then to Adam... He did not curse Adam. The Bible says that he instead cursed the ground. He says, you know, you've been working in the garden and things, oh, they just grow wonderfully. But now you will have to work very hard. There'll be thorns and thistles. You go, oh, 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 cut myself right there. And, and then there will be weeds that grow up. And, and he, oh, you will just have to work and, and till the ground and water it and plow it. And then he said, you will turn to dust. You came from dust, and you are going to return to dust. You know what, kids? That was the greatest punishment for all, that their wonderful bodies that God had given to them, that now that body was going to begin to die. But you remember that God says, in the day you eat of the tree, you will surely die. Adam went out and lived 900 more years, but his body had begun to die. And we're going to find out that some part of him really did die. But you know, his soul, oh, that was the worst part. Because in his soul, instead of having a will and a want to worship and follow God as creator and maker, he now had a sin nature. 
And you know, a sin nature is, is that we want to sin. It's an I want to sin. Now you're probably thinking, no, 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 not me, no, no. I wake up and I only want to do good things. But you know what sin is? Sin is wanting your own way. So you know what? You go home and there is your little brother or sister and he wants to play with something of yours. Oh no, you can't play with that. No, I want to play with it. Besides, I don't want you to break it. And, and your mother says, could you help me with dinner? Oh, no, no, I'm playing computer games. And, and besides, I, I'm talking to somebody on the phone, and, and I want just a little time to play. And that's what sin is. I don't want to help others and follow God. I want to do what I want to do. And they were born with a want to. But the worst part was that the part of them where they had fellowship with God and they could worship God, that was separated from God. But you know what? God said there has to be a covering for your sin. And even back then, he was giving them a, a picture of who was someday going to come and cover their sin. And so the Bible tells us that God said, well, this is what happens, the punishment for sin. Remember, God is always just and he's always right, and his punishments are always correct. And so he says, there must be shedding of blood, but I'm not going to shed your blood. He says, there's going to be a substitute. I will accept a substitute. And so the substitute that he accepted, he says, will take a little lamb. And so they took that little lamb as they were taking that little lamb, and its blood had to be shed. Don't you think that the tears were coming down? This little lamb had done nothing wrong. They had sinned. And yet the lamb had to pay. But you know what would have made them even sadder? If they had known that the very one that walked and talked with them in the garden was the one that would someday give his life, he would be that little lamb. He would be the innocent one. He would be the one that knew no sin, but became sin and died that death on the cross to pay for the fun punishment of their sin. Oh, that would have made them very, very sad. But you know, the Bible tells us that there's one other thing that God did. God gave them the very first promise that the promised one, the Messiah, someone to take their sin away was going to come. And here in Genesis 3.15, it tells us that, you know what, the seed of the woman. Now, if when he says the seed of the woman, that meant it would be a person. And the seed of a woman, it's really the seed of a man. And so we, we, it was going to be someone different. We know it was the seed of a woman. It was a virgin-born birth. And of course, he says, and that seed of the woman, and he was talking to the serpent, is you will bruise him on the heel. Now, just a bruise on the heel? Well, what happened to Christ when he came to this earth? Well, he died on the cross. You know what? That, that was much more serious. That was much more serious than just a bruise on the heel. But you know, the Bible tells us that even though he died, he came alive. And then he ascended up into heaven. So it wasn't a fatal blow at all. But then he says, but that seed of the woman, you will bruise him on the heel, but he will crush your head. You know, if you want to kill a serpent, you don't whack him on the tail. You whack him on the head. And that deals a death blow. He says, but there will be a death blow to you. And then when he gives his life, gives you his righteousness, then you will be able to do what God created you to do all the time. And that was to someday live in heaven with him and rule and reign with him, be part of his family. God says, yes, your body will turn to dust, but only for a while. Then you'll get a new body, and then you'll be able to live in heaven if you've put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've said, yes, you became sin for me. I want you to take my sin, and I want your righteousness. I accept that gift that you've given to me. Then God says, I will forgive your sin, and you someday will Will live in heaven with me. I hope that you have put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you've told him, oh yes, Lord, I forgive your forgiveness of my sin. Thank you for your righteousness. Oh, I want to live for you forever, with you forever in heaven. Oh, I'm so glad you joined us today. Yes, sin in, did enter into the world, but God made a way for our sin to be forgiven by his very own son giving his life in our place. It's a wonderful story. Oh, and it's not just a story. It's the truth. It's from the Bible. Well, I hope you have a good week. I am so glad you joined us today. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.